<laughs> How are you all doing, Ralph here, Ralph for Customs now? A little engineering job in. Um, I'm not sure I can make it clear, but what we're going to do, we've got these stainless bolts, 3 8 UNC, 3 8 half inch UNC, 3 8 UNC. Um, and we've got to machine the heads to take a gauze, yeah, and a circlip. Now, that's no mean feat. Speaking to my good friend Barney, of the, you should have get that backbone a bit of a kick down, right, for fame. And I'm going to make the head in two parts. I'm going to machine the head down <laughs> to accept the gauze and a counterbore for the open part. So a, a minor diameter opening out to a major diameter and then cut it in half if you like. And with the, the remaining half is going to be bored through, through all the way through the bolt to let the gases up and then we're going to weld the two halves together and mill it through again. That's the plan. So stick with me. Um, we'll give it a good fucking shot, eh? It's a rare one. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I'm gonna attempt what I've done. I've cut the bolts down to the right length, and it doesn't give me a lot to hold. I thought I'd do that first, then machine the threads, then spin them round, and machine this. Um, I think I might have gone arse about face, as we say. I think I might have done better to machine the head before I tried to cut the thread. My reasoning is that I've got to hold it by the thread in the chuck when I go to machine the thread and I don't want it tearing what's left of the head after I've machined it out, after I've cut a pocket in it and machined it through. So, What I need to do is clean that end up, face it off basically. So, so I'll the alice for that. See it fits in the chuck this way round which is just what we need so I'm just going to nice and steady trim that off just to clean it up and purely for looks really I've, I've cut them a little bit over one thread over length I've gone so that should give me uh, enough to face off the sides like this lovely and then put a chamfer on because we're going to be running a die down. It's quite tough actually. Mm -hmm. Like that. So that's ready to uh, go over to the big lathe and get the thread cut down and then we'll spin it around and pocket the head out. Okay, Let's turn that off. So we're just chucking this off. Now we're back over here. I'm going to use a bearing to get it level. So we just wind that in gently until it runs through. And then give it a nip up. And that will do us. Drop the speed for thread cutting. We're going to want to die down. That's the plan. So, put that away properly. I'm going to want to die down, as I said. I always struggle with 
I don't know what it is with this. <laughs> but I fucking do. I'm, I've not given myself a fucking mark either, so let's do that now. So we're inching off along. Right, three quarters, which we're going to call 20 millimetres. To where the thread ends, I'll find my legs. You can see me then look at fucking Jesus. So we're going to lube him up. And I'll lube up the die. It should take on the thread and then start to cut, but I envisage difficulties. So, there may be trouble here. Right, we'll get that about there. Tighten the tail stop. And on the clutch. Wind him in. Wind you bastard. Go on. Yeah, yes. Reverse him out. Job's a good one. I will repeat on the other one off camera. That's fucking lovely. And now I'm spinning around the machine. I'm, I'm not talking about securing the threads. I might do something about that. What's it? So we've uh, cut those threads on the old, uh, sorry, we've cleaned the ends of the bolts, then we've cut the threads, now we've spun them round, and I'm going to put a ball all the way through, which I'll get down as 5.5 mil, which will leave me enough on the wall of the now tubed bolt to uh, be up to the job, I think. I'll have a look after. It's all very sketchy, I know, but... We're kind of making it up as we go along. We know that the final ends are the fastener that we need. And the thread size and yada yada yada. And everything else is kind of one off, so... I'm just going to see how it goes. Now it's A2 stainless, which machines are okay. It's not... It's not the hardest stainless to machine, but we still need to take the time. So now nice and steady with that 5.5. Five. We'll take this all the way through. And I'll join you again when we've done that. Right, oh, so that's drilled. That was arduous. I'm going to have to grind up that drill bit. It's hard work, I'd slow it down. Um, right, now, this is going to be not pocketed. The other half is going to be pocketed. Yeah, so, and the total depth of head, if you like, the thickness of the head, needs to stay about what it is now to clear everything, which is about six mil, about a quarter of an inch, for the three eight volt. So I'm going to machine this down, and this is going to have, this is going to be thin, and the, the one with the pocket in is going to be thick, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does, that's all I've got. So, I'm going to take four millimetres off this, leaving two millimetres. I might do three millimetres. How deep does that mean you're going? Two millimetres deep for the pocket I've got to make. I suppose I could half and half it, I could go three and three and make this pocket one mil deep and make the other pocket one mil deep. That makes sense. So yeah, we'll take three off. So we touch on. I'm just going to work away across the face until we're showing minus three on our readout which is there so let's have a look quick no, I don't need to deburr that do I I'm going to machine it the next thing I'm going to do is machine a pocket in there 10.8 mil now 
I didn't work, well I did work these sizes out, but I didn't take things into consideration. Um, we're going to go 11mm, go on mm 11mm. And the miner, the one that pokes through, that you'll see when it's finished, the outside hole to the world, is going to be 10mm. Uh, so that gives one mil for the gauze and circlip to be retained. So I'm going to switch out the tool in the uh, tailstock to my collet holder with this uh, end mill in and we're going to gently machine a pocket one millimetre deep in there and then we're done with that <coughs> Ooh, thank the lord and pass the ammunition so we slowed things down now <coughs> you, could, you can run this uh, if I was running this cutter in a milling machine machining this stainless I'd probably run it a little bit quicker but I'm not, so I'm not. Now the trouble I've got is my graduations on my tailstock are in two millimetres. So, I'm going to have to fucking guesstimate it to a degree. Which is fine, you know, it's not, it's not over crucial. I'm just going to gently, gently work that cutter in until we've got less than two. It's got to be about there. Oh, no. no, that's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. But I definitely take the circlip. And if I do the same on the other half of the part, to take the gauze, then we'll be winning. I'm happy with that. I'll take that. That's the job done. So that's one down. One to go. I'm going to show the other one off camera and then we'll get on to the, the second half of the adventure. Okay, so now we're on with the second part, the cap that uh, gets TIG welded onto these bolts that then uh, leaves, leaves a pocket, fucking get your words out, dickhead, leaves a pocket that the gauze and circlip can sit in and the hole all the way through that the rocker boxes on the bike can breathe out of. Job done. Now I've had to, this is number two, I've already done one, because fucking hell, I had to work out the uh, the order of processes to get it right. Not easy. But the first thing we do is machine on the middle off this end, because this is going to be our joining service, so we'll face off a mill off that. There we go. That's that done. Then we'll get this right out of the way. We're done with this for a bit now. Done with the tool post for a bit. It's all on the tail stock now. Just switch this out. And we very carefully and gently give ourselves a bit of a centre. Get the ball rolling. I need to switch this uh, centre drill around. What I found with boring the hole all the way through these bolts is that A2 stainless, if you get it too hot, gets fucking hard. So it's all a case of very gently does it. Just chip, 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 nibble away. Nothing too drastic, but what that's done is given us a start for one of three end mills. See how look, see how that's changed now. That's just coloured up, it's burnt the oil that's on there. So we need to leave that, give it a bit of a blow off. Cool things down. And I'll switch out to an end mill. Right, now we've got an 8mm cobalt slot drill, four flute slot drill. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to bore down to just past the thickness of the head, which now sits at 5.5mm. So we're going to go 6mm or so. But again, nice and steady, keep things cool. We're going to do this like Fonza. And we all know Fonza is super fucking cool, so 
keep things slow, plenty of oil, and nice and gently does it. You know. So we take that down and then we change up. Well that didn't happen on my test subject. The fucking head's come off. Really? What would you say? Have I picked the wrong fucking shot? I've not picked the wrong shot still up, have I? That's eight mil and the shaft of this bowl is fucking nine mil. Wow. Okay. I'm gonna have to do things a little differently. I have a horrible feeling that I've fucking... Oh, I don't know what I've done. I've picked the wrong fucking slot mill up and I've gone in with a 9 mill, which is fine, I can still use it. As long as I can hold this fucking bastard to machine it down, uh, I think we'll be in. So bear with. Fucking here we go. Okay, no dramas. Turn that noise. No dramas. What I intended to do was bore down into the, the shaft. It's what I did on the test piece with a eight millimeter cobalt cut off, I picked the wrong one up. I picked the nine, 9.8, whatever it is, which is fine. It's not knackered the part, but it parted it off. It broke this off free of the shaft before I wanted to. So now I've got to hold it like this to machine a little pocket that's gonna match up with this pocket. And then it'll have a smaller opening, which is the size of the one that I bought it through with to hold the circlip and the gauze. So I've just got to machine this, or a little one mil pocket in there. Um, I'm just going to use my bearing to screw it up. So we're just going to touch this onto the face of it. And press until we get it running through. There we go. Now we'll tighten that right up. Collapse it. Oh, I don't know. It used to be fucking Charles Atwood's, didn't it? I'm going to get this out of the way and bring this cutter in, which means to touch on, wind it back until I can see my 10 millimeter mark. How are we doing speed wise? Maybe a bit fast, but I think we'll be right. I only want a one millimetre cut. Which is going really well. There we go. That's that. That's that little pocket mate. Now there's a step down in there and it's gonna use uh, that I'm gonna use to track the circle and gauze. So, You'll see how it comes together. The circle, well, the gauze sits in that little pocket, and then the circle is held in this pocket. They're TIG welded together, and then this whole thing's machined to take it down to six mil, six and a half mil. But this is the, the one that I made the test piece. I parted it off because I machined it the other way around, if you like. That's got the pocket and the through bore from this side, so again, that just sits on there. We'll TIG weld those together, and bob's your answer. Okay, so they're all cleaned off, clamped in place in the vise, and I'm gonna run a TIG bead um, around it, so, mind your eyes. Well, that didn't fucking work out. I've got the weld, I can't focus. Fucking focus. Anyway, we've got the weld done. Let me swap hands, see if that makes it focus. Which, when, okay, what, what I've done, I've fucking, I can't really capture it, but the weld's blown out into the inside, which means the pocket's not fucking focus. For fuck's sake. Anyway, I'm going to have to have a rethink, so I, I think I can save the bolts. I've, uh, don't ask me why this is fucking fixed on focus and being a con, but there you go. So, I've saved one, look, that's cleaned up nice, I've just machined the shit off. 
and gave myself the pocket that I need and the through that I need and cleaned it up. I'm going to do the same with this one. Then I think I'm going to use a bit of my round stock to make the top half of the nut. So we'll have a bit of milling action after I've uh, bored and welded or however it's going to work out. Yeah, well, there you fucking go. I've cleaned them up, but I've not managed to save them. I'll see if it'll focus. It won't, will it? Fucking... See, they're not even anymore. They're all over the shop where they've been fucking welded. The problem is the thin wall that's been left. I didn't think about that, did I? I can't weld stainless that thin. Uh, I have my TIG down as low as it'd fucking go and it's overeating and it's burning and I think maybe you need to purge it because it's become a tube to stop blowout inside. So that's a fail. I think in all of my videos that's the only fail. There's a lathe uh, the spindle cover on the Atlas lathe, that got sorted in the end, I managed that, didn't I? Part fucking hundred, whatever, I mean tears like doing it. Let me run me out round backwards <coughs> when I come down with the kids. Um, yeah, fucking fail, so it's a, a wasted morning. Well, no, it's not actually wasted. There's no such thing as time wasted, is it? Because we've learnt from it. We've learnt that Ralphie can't weld stainless steel that thin. And A2 stainless, I learnt. You see the end of that's a bit ragged there. Again, it won't, I don't think it will. Oh, it will. It's not the cleanest end in the world. Is that one nicer? The hole I'm on about is because... It burnt the fucking drill bit, it glowed, it got that hard, it glowed. I wasn't going fast or hard or anything. And when A2 stainless gets red, cherry red, it goes fucking hard. So it's hard to machine, which proved difficult cleaning these up, but I didn't knacker any cutters. Um, and now I need to let the customer know that... I'm sorry, mate, I've had a go, I can't fucking make them. Which is awful, but hopefully he'll see this video and he'll, he'll see that I tried my best. Shit happens every day, a day in fucking school. So there it goes. A nice little project on a Friday morning. Fucked. Uh, yeah. I'm going to try and grab a little bit of time in the Triumph build. I want to get a video out this week, but there's very little to show. Um, and it's going to be quite a long video. There's a lot of machining. I made a spacer for the sprocket and the wheel spacers. All to jiggle it all about because I fucking changed my mind about the wheels, didn't I, at the 11th hour after I'd already got the frame done. I didn't want to chop the fucking frame up. Again, Barney. Lots of love. See you later.